If you want to go fast, you're going to need some good brakes. But with some levers and calipers costing $500 plus for a set, it's hard to justify upgrading if your brakes work decent. That was the case with my SRAM G2Rs that came stock on my Santa Cruz 5010. They stopped alright, but on long descents they would start to fade and I never felt like I could get enough bite. But there is another option for stronger and more reliable braking power without breaking the bank. Bigger Disc Rotors In this video, I'm going to cover why bigger disc rotors are a great solution to the decent brake problem. Give you a few tips on where to start your journey if you want to upgrade your disc rotors. And at the end of the video, I'm going to take these new rotors for a test ride and see if I would truly recommend this upgrade to you guys. I'm going from 180mm rotors to 203mm and I can't wait to see if it was worth it. When you ride your bike downhill, you start to build what is known as kinetic energy. Kinetic energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be changed in form. Which means if you want to stop or slow down, that energy has to go into your brakes. The more energy you put into your brakes, the more they heat up from the friction between your pads and your rotors. The faster you go and the bigger the rider, the more energy is being put into your brakes. This is where bigger rotors come in. The bigger the mass of the rotor, the more heat we can put into it. This alleviates heat from building up in the pads, calipers, and brake lines, which allows the brakes to perform optimally. Another advantage of bigger disc rotors is their mechanical advantage over smaller disc rotors. If you've ever removed pedals from your bike, you know it is much easier with a dedicated pedal wrench versus a smaller wrench with less leverage. One downside to upgrading rotors would be added weight. But if you're focused on performance gains going downhill, I don't think the added weight is a valid concern. Another downside to larger disc rotors is a decrease in modulation. I'm really curious to see how this comes into play during the test ride. So more on that later. If you're already sold on bigger rotors, let me point you in the right direction to find the perfect rotors and adapters for your setup. Typically, bikes with less travel have a smaller rotor size. For example, most trail and enduro bikes hover around the 180 to 200 millimeter range, whereas XC and lighter duty bikes typically have a 160 millimeter rotor attached to them. Most modern mountain bikes will have what is called a post mount, which is where the caliper bolts to the frame and or fork. It's the simplest design and doesn't require any adapters if you run a disc rotor that is the same size as the post mount. For example, my bike has post mounts designed for 180mm rotors, so my stock 180mm rotors require no adapters. Another common style you will see is what's known as IS or International Standard. These almost always require an adapter, which is why they are less popular. Their main draw is they bolt up using two threadless eyelets in the frame and or fork, which removes the possibility of stripping the threads in the frame and or fork. Another possible mount design is the flat mount design, which is more popular on road bikes, gravel bikes, and XC bikes. Most likely, you will have a post mount, but if you aren't sure, do some research or drop a comment and I'd love to try to help. To determine what size adapter you'll need, you will first have to decide what new rotor size you want. I went from 180 to 203, which to me seems like a reasonable jump. The post mounts on my bike and fork, without any adapters, were meant to fit a 180mm rotor. So if I want to go to 203, I will need a 23mm adapter. The adapter I purchased was this Shimano F203 post mount disc brake adapter which I will be using with the 203mm SRAM Centerline 6 bolt rotor. I'm obviously mixing brands here, which is okay if you can get confirmation that it'll work. I did my own research, and just to be sure, I emailed Worldwide Cyclery and they confirmed that the parts would work. So now I can sleep soundly knowing my brakes won't fall apart on me. Do be careful though, because the brakes are an extremely important safety feature on your bike. This should at least get you on the right track with finding the proper rotors and adapters. All right, let's get these bad boys on the bike. The install on these parts couldn't have been simpler. I took the wheels off the bike, removed the old rotor, and installed the new one. So if you notice, I'm not trying to touch it much with my fingers because if you get your finger oils on the actual part of the rotor where it contacts the pad, it can contaminate the rotor, so I'm trying to be very careful with it. But yeah, that looks much bigger. You can definitely see size comparison here. 
that's going to be quite noticeable. So, yeah, really stoked on that. Thumbnail. All right, so when installing this, you want the writing to be on the outside facing. So if the writing's here, whatever side of the wheel you're installing it on, it should be facing outward. Got some new bolts with it as well that are currently all over the floor. <laughs> all right, so now that we have them all in with our fingers, you can just go around and you basically want to go from one side to the other and then from there to there, from there to there and just work them in slowly because if you tighten one all the way down first, it could leave it a little bit wonky and uncentered. So we're just gonna walk these in nice and easy and then we will go ahead and get our torque wrench out. It should say on here, so bolt torque to 6.2 Newton meters. Boom, that's the sound you wanna hear. Boom, 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 and boom. All right, cool. So now we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the 180, obviously, and this is the 203. So yeah, that is quite a bit of difference there. That's going to make the old 5010 feel like a big boy bike, which I'm excited because that was the one thing about the 5010 that I just felt like I didn't like since the very beginning. I just felt like the braking power wasn't very good. So I'm excited to see if these make an obvious difference, which I am without a doubt certain they will make a very obvious difference. I took some comparison videos, then went back inside and removed the caliper. Make sure the arrow on the adapter is pointing forward for the rear and pointing up for the fork. Also be sure to put all the bolts in in the correct order. I left the bolts a bit loose so I could squeeze the brake lever to align the caliper and then I tightened the bolts. Just repeat these steps for the front, bed in the brakes, and they're ready for a test ride. Yo, what's up guys? So we are at one of our favorite local trails to test out the new 203 millimeter disc rotors. Now, if you go online, you'll see tons of videos of people basically going from A to B and testing how fast their new brakes can stop them. And those tests are great, but today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do all subjective testing. So I'm gonna basically go over a couple different features here on this downhill trail and basically test the first thing, which is gonna be doing endos, which I'm gonna try right here. And then next I'm gonna test just how the general stopping power is and how strong the brakes can actually stop for me. Cause there's a lot of like quick straightaways and then really sharp turns where I'm gonna have to stop really fast. So that's gonna be a good test for that. And then finally, I'm gonna test the modulation of the brakes by going over a log skinny down by a creek where you really have to be let on the brakes and modulate so that you don't go you know, too fast or too slow over it. So that's what we're gonna get into right now. So let's get the test started. All right, first test is a endo test. Nice, felt pretty good so far. Let me go a little bit faster. I'm afraid to go like too far. I feel like they're gonna stop really hard. <laughs> Couple more. Whew. Nice. All right, so after doing a couple endos, I realized that these brakes definitely have more bite than my old brakes do. When I would go for an endo in the past, I feel like the wheel would still be spinning even when I had the brake fully engaged, which is obviously not very confidence inspiring. So I would say when it comes to endos, the 203 rotor was a success. All right, so now we're gonna get into some actual downhill. There's a lot of straightaways here and sharp turns, so I'll really get to test out how these brakes work. Feeling good. Wow, 
lot of sharp turns. Feeling really powerful. Getting up to speed again. All right, here's gonna be one of our tests. See if I can stop quickly. Yeah, felt really good. Nice, let's go do that again. All right, so that feels really good so far. This was the next thing that I wanted to test out, which is basically how fast can I stop when a really sharp corner is coming up. So you see up there, there's some sketchy roots that I'm gonna have to jump over and I'm gonna get tons of speed coming down through here into this sharp left-hand turn right here. You can probably see it. And so I'm gonna need to basically be going pretty fast and then stopping and going around that turn safely. So I just did it and it felt really good, but I'm gonna get a couple more attempts on it so I can really get a feel for how this bike stops. Let's get it. You can see my tracks. It's where I broke or where I braked. I don't know however you say that. So I've hit this corner probably, probably like 30, 40 times in my life. So I know how it feels and it has never felt that good. Seriously. It just, it just locks up. It almost locks up too much. So I'm really curious to see how this modulation is. When I tried this skinny, I'm kind of nervous about this test. Is it going to be a true, a true variable to consider when upgrading to larger rotors because that's basically one of the biggest downsides other than weight. So, all right, let's get over to the log and try it out. All right, continuing on. Some more technical stuff coming up. Feeling so good, dude. It's like it's just dialed. Sharp turn. Try to put a foot down. Woo. This, whoo, <laughs> this is the skinny log I was saying about. So yeah, gonna have to modulate. This is gonna be one of the hardest tasks because it's just kind of hard to do in general. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Oh man, I think it's just mental right now, honestly. I don't even think it's the brakes. I think it's just because I think it's going to be the brakes. This is hard. I remember last time I tried to do this, I sat, I kind of did this like five times before I committed to it. Yes, sir. I think what we learned is that having a new part on your bike might psych you out a little bit more, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be able to do something. I feel like once I got up there and got a little used to the brakes coming down through those roots there, 
I feel like I was pretty confident in the brakes at that point, and I feel like once I committed mentally to doing the feature, I was good as gold. All right, so my test on the new 203 millimeter rotors was a complete success, and I would recommend to any of our subscribers to go ahead and upgrade your disc rotors to the next biggest size and see how you like them, especially if you feel like your brakes are decent. So as always, I'm Nick, and you're watching Nick and Katie. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys next Sunday.